This is the Insomniacs Anonymous Podcast, your weekly source for caffeine-induced hallucinations. Today on the podcast, we talk about Deus Ex Mankind Divided. We go over some new developments regarding Nostalrius and one of its developers, and Persona 5's delay. Brian is back with some wild discussion. Shro talks about what he thought about Overwatch during the free weekend, and Dude may be a voice actor? Stick around, the fun's about to begin! Hello and welcome to the Insomniacs Anonymous Podcast, episode 27, which is in no way significant at all. It is November 29th, and somewhere in the afternoon, maybe... And I am joined by some wonderful people. Actually, they're terrible. Stay completely clear of them. Uh, This Mm. dude run fucker. Yeah, I'm very terrible. And and, and Brian's literally insane, especially since he likes monster energy. What a loser. I mean, it's the second time (laughs) I've really had a monster energy drink, but I think I may be addicted, guys. I think a problem may be uh, happening here. It's all that sugar. Okay, number one. And I know we have a uh, stalker in the channel too. So, and oh we yeah, the really bird. Hi, where are they? Staring at us quietly. She's listening. Everyone, say hi to the bird. Don't give her the bird, though. That's rude. Yeah, yeah that is rude. Don't give her a literal bird, not a, like a figurative yeah, like flip off bird. bird. Yeah, give her a little like cockatoo. <laughs> a cockatoo? <laughs> what? Oh, okay. Wow! I did not wow. think that through. <laughs> no, you didn't. Listen, did dude. Whatever is through. going through your mind Holy right shit, now, I, I don't think I that's the most appropriate thing to say. <laughs> I wish this is that a family was, fucking friendly podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Family friendly podcast. Just yeah. saying. We never were anyway. Thanks for the whole family. Exactly. We were never family friendly. We were always fucking family friendly. No, we fucking weren't, you shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like we've nuts. derailed it. So yeah, it's derailed maybe so a little much yeah. already. Let's keep it going. <laughs> what's, Pretty what's much. Next? Yeah, what is on the agenda for today? <laughs> um. Well, we actually, you know, wrote one for once. We've always <laughs> written one. We just never really follow it. Very yeah, well. we don't follow it well, but we write one. <laughs> That's progress, right? It is progress. I feel like uh, good things are being happened. I, I, hope I just so. want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start with one specific thing because I can't pronounce half the words in it. What is going on with? The Nostralius server. Thing. <laughs> oh, uh, I, okay. So it's I not see, really like Nostralius like, Care yeah. Crooks of Ember Eater thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So it's not Nostalrius news, but it, it's just something I found kind of interesting, and it's a new game that's coming out soon. But one of the Nostalrius developers, I don't know how to pronounce his name either, but I'm going to try Echiator? Eddie. Etiacor, my bad. I, no, I think that sounds right the first time. Etiacor, no, there, there's a T there it's... and not a K, and I flip flop the two. But no. uh, Etiacor um... or Eshiacor, I don't know, is now working for a a uh, development team called Krisha Labs, and they are working with the former team lead for World of Warcraft to develop a game called Ember. Which is an online co-op war game about mech suits and aliens and stuff. That's the best way I can describe it. In fact, that's how the developer describes the game. And I thought this was kind of neat. Uh, there's not really any gameplay out yet. It's still very much in development. But it was fully funded in, on Kickstarter in like less than two days. And got funded like four times over. So this... I'm hoping this will be a great game, and I'm definitely looking forward for it. To it. <laughs> but the game... That'll definitely be fun. While pronounced Ember is spelt E-M hyphen 8 E-R, and I don't know why. <laughs> Probably yeah, like a mech a... suit number or something, but it's 
it's confusing to people and me. Nice. Yeah, good to hear from Nostalrius and definitely the Mark Kern, I believe is his name. The former WoW team lead. Like Vanilla Days. So this should be interesting. Yeah, it definitely sounds like, you know, it'll be something to look out for. Mm-hmm. As time progresses. Yeah. Is there any any actual news on the WoW Vanilla server? Not that I know of. Uh, Nostalrius is giving the source code to uh, another Vanilla WoW team, I think called Elysian or Elysian. So okay. we should still Elysian. see the re- we should s- Elysian. Thank you. Oh, we should see the return of Nostalrius in some form in the near future. I don't know exactly when, but. The team seems to be going their separate ways, or maybe joining the Elysian team. And as I just mentioned, is working with the former Wowhead team lead and stuff, so that it's good to see that going. I'd like to direct everyone's view to the chat real quick. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> is that Ar- that's Arby's wow. <laughs> yep. Okay, Arby's just up. I'm gonna slap that. Did some <laughs> really fucking awesome paper art. Uh, that is a that chocobo. Is that is like Final yeah, Fantasy ten looking chocobo, not like cheap seven or eight or whatever. That is fucking. You could see the well, details not, on that. Let's not call it cheap seven or eight. I mean, that's oh, seven. Final Fantasy seven and eight had shitty looking chocobos. You gotta admit. Well, I mean, the graphics weren't that great. Yeah, the art but... direction, honestly, I mean. It had a lot of inconsistencies in seven, anyways, yeah. but we won't get into it. But yeah, you're, you're right. It's, it looks really good, though. I want to say this looks closer to like the ten Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy ten. I may be wrong, and I'm probably looking too much into it. But that is a fucking chocobo, and I love it. And I lo- I it love whoever really cool. is the RB's PR team. They're <laughs> fucking great. And another thing, you know what? I'm actually kind of craving a hamburger right now. They don't serve burgers. They serve birds. Well, no. Whatever. I mean, but they do have absolutely delicious roast beef sandwiches. Oh, hell yes. Variety. Hell yes. Get the beef and cheddar. Images kind Angus, of look like three a... cheese. They're like, oh, my God. That kind of looks yes. like a chicken burger, you know? It, it, okay. Well, yeah. Chicken, yeah. like. Is that a Canadian thing? Did you just call a chicken patty a chicken burger? What, what do you guys call it? The chicken sandwich in America. Yeah, chicken sandwich, or if you wanted to talk about the chicken piece individually, it's just like, you know, a chicken patty. Real yeah. chicken, breaded chicken, chicken. I, I've heard patty. it both ways. Huh. I mean, chicken burger so makes be, sense. The chicken but... burger could be a Canadian thing, but. I, I guess, yeah. Don't come to America and say chicken burger. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to shoot you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's actually called a chicken burger, and I have seen it called that at some places. Because I mean, you know, you have a hamburger, which is technically ground beef, but ground which, chicken but would probably still it should be a chicken be burger. Ham, you know, but... yeah, I would yeah. say it technically should probably be called a beef burger. Exactly. So that you guys, like you guys are the ones that are fucked up. Yeah, yeah okay. a little bit. When in Rome, do like the Romans do. Oh, fair <laughs> enough. That is uh, wise advice. When in Rome, shit on the streets. <laughs> I, well, technically, you shit next to that big hole in the sidewalk, which happens to be near the street. So if you shit on the street, it's just like you missed the trash can. I feel it's like fine. that's still kind of like a you know, dude, what the hell? You were like five feet away. Ah, who cares? Someone else's problem now. Yeah, it's the road cleanup crew. They'll be fine. I'm sure they'll be fine. Anyway. But yeah, tell me, uh, what else is going on? So, I have been playing Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Yes. I did see that, yeah. I saw and it it's, that. um, it came out a few months ago. Um, I will just dis- put out the disclosure that I am a very diehard Deus Ex fan. And so, I mean, my standards are probably a little different than some people. But, um... I thought Human Revolution, which rebooted the series, was pretty damn good. It had some flaws. Uh, Some people really hated on those flaws more than others. Um, To recap, though, basically, um, 
human revolution went with an idea of an art direction they really liked this like gold yellow shader style that was built into the textures of the game themselves it, there was no way to remove it it wasn't like an overlay or like just a weird screen tinting mm -hmm. i mean if you're gonna tint your game a weird color and make it a theme they did it right and went balls to the wall crazy with it um because it you know there were proper reflections and uh you know as i said it was built into the shader so like it looked good it didn't look like you know somebody had just fucked with the color balance on your monitor um but it did turn everything weirdly yellow i didn't mind it but it pissed off a lot of other people um it it was brought up that you know definitely should if you know it was a thing in 2014 or i can't remember when the game actually came out to you know tint your game yellow and every game you know call of duty final fantasy halo whatever just all decided to tint their games yellow or something there would be riots in the street yes i agree but um as a, a one-off thing um it was interesting definitely probably shouldn't do it again but i, I give them credit for it but uh deus ex is also really uh, about um, multiple avenues, really getting a lot of narrative out of side quests and being able to um, explore like these little data pad tablet things and books that people have lying around and you get to read these passages of books like even like quoting really important stuff from like the Knights Templar and Dante's Inferno and you know some, some really heavy philosophical stuff that ties into the game. And it makes for just an absolutely wonderful game experience from the original game. Um, I don't talk about Invisible War because it's Invisible War. That was uh, um, Invisible Wars was the second one, right? That came out after right. the original. Yeah, I never played is. that one, and I was told to stay clear, stay yeah, clear from it. It's so the best. Well, it's invisible, so how are you going to see the war anyway? <laughs> there you wouldn't have much to talk about. Invisible okay. War did do some interesting things, but it doesn't make up for the hell that it is. I did play through it, though, and it is actually a, you know, nice long... I don't want to say fleshed out, but I mean, it does cover all the avenues. They just go really left-field nonsensical quite often. So anyways, Human Revolution, uh, one of the complaints with that is there... It, looked really good there was a lot of detail into certain aspects of the game but that exploratory aspect um wasn't as strong as it could have been again i wasn't terribly upset by it um but it was a little bit more linear than i would have expected there there aren't as many long side quests that parallel the entire story plot when you when you get to the ending of the game, Deus Ex is known for having multiple endings to it. Um, and while granted, the original game still had basically just a choose your own ending, but it had a quest line to get to each ending in the final level. The <laughs> Human Revolution version literally made it a button push. It was, welcome to the end of the game, you beat the final boss, and here are now four options you may choose to end the game. And then when you picked one of those options, you got a shitty newsreel um, montage, like literal actual news footage, stock footage kind of a thing, montage with the protagonist narrating a different like story blurb paragraph. It was like a minute long each. And, and this, they just- Sorry, this one was in what- which Human Revolution. This is- the one that uh, came out prior to Mankind Divided. Okay, because I mean, reboot. wasn't it similar at the end of the first one? Like, you know, where you had to make a choice and then you basically just got a cut scene as, as the ending? A little bit, it was. But um, the original game, um, the quote cut scenes were rendered in the game and still had like various different characters interacting with each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a result of your actions. And again, you also had to chew, like there was a, you get to the final level, you get to the part where you kind of are exposed to the different story endings that you could choose. 
And then you had to go down like a quest line to complete those endings. And I think when I actually did the game uh, the first time, I actually opened up all of those quests and then just refrained from doing the last piece of the puzzle in each of those. And then I finally made up my mind just in a kind of like last ditch. I, I want to explore all my options and literally did everything kind of an idea. Oh yeah. Um, I remember actually saving right be at that point and then going back and replaying the save over and over to choose each option. Yeah, um, I remember that's what I did too on the uh, on the first Deus Ex. So, and I did that in Human Revolution too, for what it's worth. But uh, they, it was kind of a cop out. They there was no quest line, weird puzzles, or anything to solve. It was literally just a you walked to a room behind the boss, and it opened a panel that had four different buttons. <laughs> and oh, that's kind of lame. Yeah, and then you got a um, slightly different movie montage of narration and so it wasn't rendered in the game you didn't see anything with the characters and even the montage or even the narration was kind of a cop out they're just really open-ended like oh yeah humanity went to destroy itself because you know bad things or no humanity persevered and stuff and there's like no specifics about the game or the plot or whatever you did or whatever so that was um that was my biggest complaint so Mankind Divided has improved upon a lot of those complaints. I really feel like at this point, the game is Deus Ex very truly again. And I really loved Human Revolution. I don't mean to bash it. I'm pointing out the negatives just to point out what Mankind Divided did to fix it. Um, the yellow tint filter thing is not there. Uh, it looks normal it looks really good this game is so fucking pretty like human revolution looked good but this game um i mean i looked at some of the screenshots you were posting on discord and holy crap the level of detail on them i know and you know what's scary is i have a i have an eight core processor i have a gtx 970 and um I have 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. By all intents and purposes, I have a fairly good game here. Or, I mean, a good computer rig here. This game killed it. I, yeah. I had to work on tweaking the settings um, because after... there, There's a certain point where there were several cutscenes in a row before you got to the next save point because it's the intro of the game. Mm -hmm. and I had to keep watching those intro cutscenes again and going through them because it would the game would crash to desktop and crash like every other process running because it had managed to use all 16 gigabytes of my RAM. God damn. And uh, on top of that, I mean, granted, I didn't have actual stats running for the uh, graphics card, but I mean, it was basically maxing out the graphics card settings, too, because if you go to, you know, now games have the not just high setting, but, you know, you're very high and ultra oh, yeah. levels. And if you crank it up past very high on some of the texture settings, it actually pops up a warning message and says, this uh, setting requires more than four gigabytes of video RAM, which the 970 actually doesn't have. It's supposed to have four gigabytes of RAM, but if you paid attention to other things, uh, NVIDIA kind of copped out, and it's only really like 3.6 gigabytes of RAM, and they got sued into hell for that. Um, mm -hmm. But... Uh, but yeah, uh, you need like SLI or Crossfire graphics cards or one of the crazier new Titan card, one of those things to be able to go even higher. Um, but even with that, um, not being able to hit maximum settings, which I, I feel dirty about because I thought my computer would be able to do that. And this game just brought it to its knees. But um, I was able to run it at high settings for minute amounts of time to get really cool screenshots but even not doing that like turning it down just a little bit like you can almost not tell the difference uh on how good it is 
and especially playing a game and not being a crazy graphics montage it's just i'm blown away constantly by how pretty this game looks and how detailed it is and um like there's a part in the early beginning where you can turn on your tv in your apartment and your character actually just grabs like his cup of coffee or whatever the hell and sits in his couch and the camera goes over his shoulder to watch the tv which is rendered in the game mm -hmm. and so you see the detail of the tv the detail of all like the walls behind it and everything as you're actually looking at the protagonist character and you can see like every hair follicle in his head it's intense that's um, awesome but they also added go to, to focus again uh because shro's bad at that they added a lot more detail again the data pads and all the like weird little scripts and emails that you can get into uh to read and really get this like second storyline that that like is a I don't want to say subplot, but it kind of is. It just runs underneath the the, the plot that you're handed directly in the gameplay. If mm -hmm. you're someone that likes to explore like I am, and that's really what Deus Ex tries to tell you, um, you're given a lot more of that. I feel like I've gotten, before really even getting into the main thick of the game, uh, I feel like I've gotten that at about half what was like the halfway point in human revolution oh, nice. there's just already so much more so i'm really excited about that um the game has a lot of deus ex options too like again i felt like um human revolution it it had options and you could definitely go a lot of different routes at certain points but it was also a little linear like okay if you took the time you could crack this you know safe or something uh in this hallway but really you're still going down this hallway whereas um mankind divided has given you options to go off on entire tangent side quests pretty much from the get-go the tutorial mission i was taking uh secondary routes and getting extra loot and weaponry and the game hadn't even actually taught me how to do that I'm a dance veteran. I know that I should expect these things. And hey, look, if I go off the beaten path, they're there. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, you know what you're making me want to play this game now because uh, I really enjoyed the uh, the reboot. I didn't actually finish it yet, but um, it was so uh, it was still a good time. <sighs> I I've never why, uh, played a Deus Ex game because I can't afford games right now. No. Like, they just well, recently Deus bought Ex, Doom. The original game is from. 2001 and has like over 60 hours of gameplay in it so just go find it online <laughs> okay it's literally 15 years old well all righty uh, then i'll do that and it, it's still considered the quintessential game that started it all so i highly recommend that to any of you listening yeah um, i think i ended up playing that game back in like for the first time back in like what 2008 or 2000 so i played it in something? college again and that but, was a terrible idea because I got like nothing done for a week. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just but, like, I, I played it for the first time, right? Like fairly late in its lifespan. And it's still like it held up really well, in my opinion, anyways. Oh yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, no, I think the first time I played it, it was like 2008, 2007. Okay. Because, so. yeah, like, I mean, the, the graphics, yeah, obviously, you could tell it was, like, slightly dated, you know, it was older technology. Oh, yeah, no, you got the mitten hands and, like, box like, mouths. <laughs> yeah, but the gameplay itself, I mean, it was so good. It was just the story. It was just, For oh, sure. man, it really, like, just drew you in. It was really good. Oh, oh, so. oh, Mankind Divided has the uh, grid inventory system again. Awesome. So Wait, you have to like micromanage your inventory a little bit. Not really micromanage, but it's still there. So oh, grid as in like each inventory item is like a different size and yeah, like uh, okay. Diablo style. Okay. Uh, I like, did, didn't did the reboot have that as well? I feel like it did. It did. Um, but mankind divided has really added to it. Um, okay. For starters, there's now a new um, mechanic where you can upgrade your weapons. 
mm -hmm. like you kind like you could in um the original game where you could put like a laser scope or something like that or just make the gun slightly more powerful by you know increasing the projectile velocity or something stupid like that uh mankind divided has added a system to do that okay. and um they've also provided i don't know how useful it's going to be because i've only seen it at my apartment and knowing deus ex games you do tend to revisit a set piece at, a, at well you know at least once or twice in a game but um not frequently mm -hmm. but you are provided with a like a storage bank for several items in your apartment so i don't know if how I'll, how much i'll get to use that but it is there but yeah, no, you can um, add to it. And then there is, again, another little detail I loved. It's so stupid to get excited, but um, the gratuitous amounts of alcohol and bags of chips. Hmm. Those are back in Mankind Divided. Nice. <laughs> Half of my inventory is beer right now. <laughs> <laughs> beer and chips, really? Yep. Yep. So... If mods existed, they could mod the beer to be Mountain Dew and the chips to be Doritos, and then we got some MLG Pro shit going on here. Yeah, Do they much. have an energy drink in the game? Uh, Possibly. I haven't gotten very far, truly, I think. I mean, I've spent, not counting the times of troubleshooting the crashes, I've spent probably like four or five hours in the game, and if Level zero is the tutorial. I'm only in level one. <laughs> so there's the, the set piece is just, and map in general is just big enough with that many goals going on already. Um, that I, I can't, I, I read some of the reviews on Mankind Divided and I am seeing some of the cracks that I'm worried about. Um, the intro is very hand holdy with its um, cutscenes. Uh, and that's, you know, Square Enix style, and it looks pretty, but it's not Deus Ex, and so um, I was really excited to see that one of the cutscenes is actually done from your perspective and rendered in the game, which is where I took some of the screenshots I shared, um, but you have very, very little control. You can really only turn your head in that section, and there's no way to skip through it. So when that was the section that was causing my game to crash, it got really annoying because that's like a six minute long section. Um, but it did look cool and, you know, Square Enix style. But um, there are some goals going on and some leaps, I will say, in the plot and assumptions where it they could have very easily extrapolated on it and made it a better game and a better story where instead it kind of just forced boom plot it happened and you just have to accept it and do this next goal and i'm not sure how i feel about that i'm going to continue exploring it and i'll get back to you on it because i've now wasted about 25 minutes talking about this because oh my god deus ex yes because, you have <laughs> because fro yeah um, so Clearly, tell me my that... attempts at teaching Brian and Dude Run how to tell Shro to shut the fuck up, not working. But not working. it adds length to the podcast, and that's good. I could add length talking about how the sky is blue. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Maybe next podcast. We have more things to talk about. Than next podcast. Shro discovers <laughs> the sky is blue. Sounds like a science hour. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> We talk oh, about God, gaming news us. for half an hour, and then the next hour of the podcast is just you talking about that. Shro goes full beaker on everything. Yeah. Fun with science! Watch, I'm going to use that as an audio clip now. <laughs> so, um, Persona 5, what happened? Uh, I'll just refresh the minds of those that don't know. Persona 5 is a JRPG based on the rest of the Persona series. Uh, it came out in September this year in Japan, but it got the U.S. release originally for Valentine's Day of 2017 to keep it the theme of stealing hearts or something. has been pushed to April 4th, 2017 
for uh, localization issues or just to have more time to translate everything? I would say that sounds... <laughs> Reed, uh, we didn't hire enough translators and we have no idea what this weird teenager is saying in Japanese. <laughs> I think they just needed more time to voice lines and stuff. But it's still coming out to PS3 and PS4 just on April 4th, 2017. So if you have either of those systems, go go get it. Oh, and apparently the PS3 in version... What? Sorry? I said in five months, go get in it. In five months, go get it, yeah. <laughs> Pre-order it now if you can. It looks really, really good. Awesome. But yeah, this I, is you know, one of those... Was Persona 2 or Persona 3 or something. What? This Sorry, I was talking like over you at the time. Sorry? I was talking over you at first. <laughs> what were you saying? Oh... No, I was just saying, like, I, I forget if it was Persona 2 or Persona 3, but, um, yeah, like, I saw one of these games being played, like, years and years ago, and it looked really cool. I kind of like the concept that it was, like, it seemed like, oh, like, um, basically, you, you still had, it was, like, a bully type of game, right? Like, Rockstar's Bully, where, like, kind of uh, right, yeah. you were still kind of have to go to class and do all this other stuff. Yeah, you had, like, game. a time management thing going. Yeah, uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. That's actually and, uh, all the Persona games. They all have that kind of time management system where you're going right, to yeah, school. Yeah, so that's and, why the Persona CD series just yeah. seems like a really cool thing to um to play. I really would like to check that out. You should. So it's great. When the uh, yeah, I'll probably do that when the new one comes out. But right. uh, what console is it coming out for? PS3 and PS4, and okay. it the visual difference between the two is actually. None at all, almost. I'm impressed. Like, wow. you'd think the last-gen port would be shittier looking. No. Mm -hmm. it, it is not the case. It, it still looks phenomenal. It, it almost looks like there's no difference at all. It's maybe mm -hmm. minor awesome. lighting, but nothing, no difference at all other than that. Awesome. Well, if I don't end up getting a PS4 by then, I might just have to pick it up on the PS3. I recommend it. I'm going to have to get a PS3 as well. Mm -hmm. I want this game, damn it. <laughs> I played 4 and loved the shit out of it, and now I want 5. Oh my god. It has to happen. And the soundtrack. Nothing but jazz. Nothing really? but oh, jazz. That's interesting. that's interesting. Nothing but jazz, Brian. Nothing but jazz. Oh uh... my god. Spoiler warning, dude loves jazz so much. All the jazz, all the time. Dude orgasms when he hears the soundtrack. <laughs> it's fucking sexy. Awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely have to check it out. Do it. Uh, you know what, actually, uh, speaking of games that we've been playing, I've also been playing a couple of games. I finally got around. Okay, I've been wanting to play The Witcher for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And how old is this game now? I think it's like almost 10 years old or something. It's ridiculously old. Yeah. And so I finally got around to playing it. And it's actually, uh, yeah, it's it's really good. And it's, um, I'm, I'm actually impressed at the level of polish that this Polish developer has put into their game. The level of Polish this Polish developer has. <laughs> yes, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> Um, the amount so of yeah, Poland it's... is insane in this game. <laughs> the amount of Poland is insane. Like you should see, like this game is stuffed with pierogies. <laughs> like it's just pierogies everywhere. Like it's coming out of your, coming out of people's ears. Oh my! It's like an NPC walks up to you selling pierogies and is like, "No, thank you. We have too many in this game." <laughs> <laughs> pretty much God. so um yeah you know i've been playing that and i've been playing some diablo 2 i'm like i went on this really like kind of like old school just trying to catch up on like all these old games that i i never really got around to playing so diablo 2 was another one of those i've never and, played uh, diablo 2 yeah the graphics oh man uh, yeah uh, they're dated <laughs> yeah they really are eh? they're very dated and um it kind of makes you see, like, wow, like Diablo three is such an amazing game compared to it, obviously because of the, uh, yeah, the because of obviously like the, the yeah the appearance and just gameplay, gameplay and like though. just the quality of life quality of life things that they've added to it. Yeah, 
But let's not also forget that Diablo 3 was a pretty meh experience when it first came out. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I, I feel like it just it got for... better over time. Yeah. So, yeah, that was kind of like, you know, that's kind of what I've been up to for the past couple of weeks. Those are my games of the week. Um, but I should let you guys know, though, that I, I'm back on the WoW. God damn it, Brian, why? Yeah. I. You know what? A, the new expansion uh, came out. Fire tits both, right? Yeah, oh, fire yeah. tits. Social, I'm actually playing with socialized medicine. We're in the same guild right now. So I'm just leveling my character up. We're going to run some dungeons. Hopefully maybe do a raid or so. Uh, looking for raid stuff. And uh, my god, mm. the expansion is amazing so far. It's so good. Like the intro, uh, if you played the Warlords of Drainer, the intro, yeah, you know how it was kind of like epic and like very just times change, exactly. Yeah, like honestly, like this is even better. Like you're thrown into like a mini raid right from the beginning. Oh, wow, and just things happen, and it's just very, very cool. Uh, you and artifact weapons, which is basically you get a for each spec of your class, you get a certain type of weapon that stays with you throughout the entire expansion, and you level up that weapon as time goes on, oh. acquiring new powers and new Ooh, abilities. That sounds kind of cool. And yeah, it's it's really cool. I'm really liking it. That's and like the adding things and mankind divided to a weapon. Ooh, nice. Yeah, and it's like you know you can equip like different runes on it and. Stuff like that, so it's like it's uh, it's really cool. It can be a famous weapon too, not just like any old hand me down sword from level one or whatever. Sorry, it could be like a legendary weapon, like so a weapon that we all know about in World of Warcraft, right? right? So, yeah, the mm -hmm. Frostmorn, for instance, or right? The Lightbringer, an Ashbringer, sorry, that's right, yeah, Ashbringer. So, um and uh, the zones, uh, so far, I mean, I'm only, uh, I'm only in the first zone. I'm level 102 at the moment, but it's, uh, it's very reminiscent of, um, what was that zone in Northrend? Uh, Howling Fjord. Howling Fjord. Okay. Fjord. Yeah. Fjord. Fjord. Whatever. But yeah, Talking it's about so Poland, good. and apparently we don't have that. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's Polish, is it? No. Fjord. I look up that origin. So, but yeah, I'm having a blast with this expansion. I ended up boosting one of my characters to level 100 because you get a free boost when you purchase the expansion. Mm -hmm. So I am currently playing a Pandaren monk, and it's a it's a really fun class to play. I'm really liking the DPS spec on it. Nice. And he's a you know just a little panda guy just running around everywhere. Very cool. So Love yeah, that's guys. it. That's that's my uh, that's that's my stuff there. That's what's happening this week, and uh, I've I think I've played this guy for like twelve hours already, and I just started uh, yesterday. So I feel like I'm going to be spending quite a bit of time in the WoW. Mayhaps. Mm -hmm. If I ever get money, I'll have to join you again. But that's going to probably be a while. Oh, fair enough. Might join for fair Vanilla enough. WoW if we ever get into that again. Oh, yeah, yeah, we definitely will. We'll definitely do the Vanilla WoW. But, yeah, if you ever, you know, are able to join back in, then uh, we'll be playing with yeah. Sockmet for sure and some of his friends. Yeah. That'll be good times. Do it. Do the <laughs> thing you do. My leg's falling asleep. Ah. There you Speaking go. Speaking of... Blizzard games. I mm -hmm. finally have my Mopa Cherry popped. Yay! Watch you say that in front of because apparently Heroes of the Storm isn't a MOBA to some people. I don't get why. Well, I've also pretty much come to the agreement that the MOBA community is perhaps the most toxic thing I've seen in gaming, and yeah, everyone can yeah. go second day. Yeah. <laughs> I think even the MOBA community agrees with that. Pretty much. So, yeah, not 
Not really. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Pretty bad. Shro tried to care. Failed to care. Didn't actually put forth the effort to try to care. Eh. Eh. But uh, no, I um, have I've played one character so far, and yeah, he played I, I've been uh, pretty good with that. Played the dwarf dude. Ooh, you have a stalker. You have a stalker. I'm a stalker person. You have a stalker. Oh, I'm we do have Jack. a stalker. Hi, I didn't know. What are you doing? Are you gonna say hi? For you those listening in, the stalker is a person who just kind of joined our channel and discord that while we were recording yeah we don't really actually lock down the channel we yeah. should we should i don't know if we should do that or i kind of like the ability that people can just i don't mind show up. people coming in yeah, and listening people can it's always just kind of uh, join in listen in you know it's all good you like have a certain people can talk in here function or like a voice channel specifically for podcasting i mean yeah i could actually make a channel that uh only certain people have talking abilities, but I don't know. Nah, I, I, I have fun with this. Discussion okay. for another time. Yeah, always. exactly. Yeah, like, we can figure that later. But um, So, MOBA, right. So, right. But yeah, the thing is, I feel like Blizzard has also just gone out and said, you know what? Yeah, we're a MOBA. Call us a MOBA. Like, pretty much. I mean, it's... It's... Yeah. They've just kind of given into it, so... Yeah. I mean, away. if we really want to put my uh, thoughts on the whole thing, um, multiplayer online battle arena. Yeah, that's very vague. Defines wording. like pretty much every multiplayer game where you yeah. play against somebody. So, I mean, very let's broad just term, start right yeah. there. I, yeah. I just dismantled the entire foundation of your community, MOBA. Boom. What now? Come at me. I, I think, Come at me. I think you're not the first one. And yeah, I know. They I probably know. don't have a better <laughs> way of describing the game, so... MOBA it is for now. MOBA it is. Strange top-down tower defense where you control a single character. <laughs> <laughs> strategy RT... Multiplayer strategy RTS? I don't know. In an isometric view. <laughs> That's what an RTS um... is, isn't it? That's a mouthful. That's yeah. RTS camera, isn't it? Well, yeah, but Pretty I mean, much. real time strategy game could be a. Uh, it, it could have a different view than an isometric. It, it, real time strategy is more about controlling numerous units and and or built like structure functions yeah. and real time as a battle single strategy. Player. And I've noticed MOBA is more about like a single unit that you control, and everything else yeah. is kind of automated. Yeah, this is true, but um, automated you, RTS. <laughs> how are you finding it so far? Um, I've been liking it fairly well. Um, the strange party matching and disconnect issues aside, mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that's nothing to do with the game and everything to do with my internet. Connect. Well, no, the time where we literally were just banned from ready readying up was actually the game. We don't know. What yeah, that was that was funny. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, yeah. Ready, and then the game unreadies us. Like, oh but, my god, what? yes, with, our, <laughs> with one we were playing with one of our members. Yeah, yeah. that was pretty pretty hysterical. And, and really apparently, they needed the to time. like relog four times, or we need to switch leader, didn't we? And then yeah, you know, just then, turn around three times. Yeah. Shake some salt over your shoulder. Right. And do the hokey other pokey things. backwards it, and Larry. then Exactly. Yeah. So and on that note, also uh I think Blizzard Games uh that Overwatch free weekend, right? Yeah. Right? right? Yeah. So what do you think of the game during the free weekend show? Um I feel like I had uh some shared thoughts with a few others that the game is definitely very polished. Like, Spit Shine Polish is low tier compared to it. Um, so there is that. I'm actually, in that regard, really surprised that it's only like 7 gigs. Because TF2 is like 16. Um, it's all the hats. Have to be, it's those the hats. hats have to go somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, but that they're... Uh, I don't know. I mean, oh, even the base game for TF2 was still like 10 gigs. Oh, okay, good point. And that was in 2009. 
or no, I'm wrong about that. Seven, six. There about. Okay, listen. Six. Maybe maybe the people at Valve are just not efficient coders. Okay, like probably Gabe not because Half Life Three Gabe did still isn't work. out. Gabe did used to work at Microsoft. Okay, they're not efficient coders. Let's just put no. it that way. But um, I mean, if they were, we'd probably have so, Source Two by now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like. I, I like the, the polish. I like a lot of the characters and the fact that they're... I think the best thing that Overwatch has done, it has, has some really unique uh, ability mechanic design. Um, mm-hmm. There are certainly things that I think need a bit more balance, but um, you know that comes with pretty much every game, especially with a multiplayer online environment. Um, but... I think really my only biggest drawback is that some of the maps I'm really not fond of. Uh, one map in particular, I don't know the names of them to really actually give a solid example yet, but um, one, pap- one map in particular is an attack-defend map, and the first point uh, between the first point and the attacker spawn is literally a single choke point that it has a low ceiling. How that got through quality control, I don't know. But basically, the defenders just have to constantly throw damage into the choke, and they win. Which so, map is this? Sorry. I, well, yeah, yeah, what like, is don't the map like? So I can't tell you. <laughs> it, uh, it's got like a wintry feel, and there's like a lake on the left side of it. Um, but that's, yeah. There doesn't seem to be an alternate route, and it's really annoying. And that's not something you should be doing in a game of that design. But... It's one of the. It's got to be oh, one of Volskaya. the maps. Oh, Volskaya. Volskaya. Yeah. Oh, that one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's a bit of a. Yeah, that's kind of a messed up. But the thing is, though, like if you have um, a lot of characters are able to go across that lake and around. So yeah. That all does help. Uh, fire can definitely yeah. cross. Uh, Farah, who else can do it? We got Reaper. Reaper can, Diva. yeah. I think Sombra Genji. might be able to throw her beacon that far. Right, yeah. Maybe. But, I mean, other, otherwise, you know, if you're anyone else, then you're kind of hosed. You got to go through the through that really, really annoying choke point. I think Lucio might be able to wall ride over, and Mercy can definitely get over with support. With the uh, also the Lucio, guardian angel the, thing. the area healing thing, I love it. Oh yeah, that that is great. It's so cool. I so, remember yeah, when I, got, I first I, played that game, I was like, "Man, this is so weird!" Like, what? And then after, I'm like, "Oh, I get it. I love this. This is amazing." Right. Yeah, I um, I definitely like a lot of the uniqueness put to it. Um, one thing I have noticed though is. The game seems to really compensate for accuracy for you. I, I don't know if it's overly large hitboxes, or I think it's more closer to a lot of the hit scan weapons having really large, like, reticules margins. I guess, like a hit scan weapon is literally a a point to point mechanic, but you could draw a radius around that point and make like a a pipe, if you will, and anything in that pipe gets hit. And I feel like they've done something to that because as playing some of the sniping characters, I know it was like a really, you know, at best glancing shot, and I still got massive damage on my opponent for it. Fun and fact, it actually I've... is large hitboxes. Is it? Yeah. Okay. It might be a little mix of like... Yeah, the it could cone be thing and, and larger hitboxes, but it is definitely there. Definitely are bigger hitboxes. I know that much. So, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like that should be toned down for an FPS game, but at the same time, everybody rather accurately makes the point that Blizzard is kind of the well. We took this idea and we made it easier and quote funner to play, and part of the way of doing that is 
bringing the skill bar down a little bit so that it's more about full mastery of the understandings of like a character's mechanic or the map's mechanics or something like that than it is just uh you know i can put yeah. reticle on someone's head really accurately and quickly and i get that so it, but it's it's a different feel i can feel the difference so it's interesting to go through that after all the other fps's i've played i love it um, only because i can't aim anyway <laughs> Yeah. I can at least get a lucky shot, a I... easier lucky <laughs> shot off ahead. But I would say there are definitely days where I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I am hitting hitting the uh, broadside of the barn is just not happening today." I'm just <laughs> gonna put down area damage. Or this is actually why my main class originally in TF2 was a medic, but that was before any of the classes had got any sort of weirdness. And then all the classes got weirdness in TF2, and then I didn't play Medic anymore. <laughs> but, um... So yeah, my overall thought is that it's a pretty damn good game. It's... I don't know if I want to actually say that it's like a straight-up successor to TF2. I mean, it kind I of is. Don't. Like, I'm, but... not, I'm not even in the mood to compare the two. I don't even think. Well, you can I'm not really trying to set up a comparison. I'm just sitting. It's like they do have enough differences, but yeah, it's like know. a spiritual successor. I mean, you yeah, know, maybe spiritually. I feel like TF2 is so such an old game now that it's like you know, it's the comparison is just it's not fair. Indeed, yeah, it's a little for loose. Nobody. Yeah. Um. So my overall thought to it was basically, I think it's a really good game. Um, but due to the fact that it is an FPS, I mean, I guess it does have the AI ability, but otherwise, you know, you play against other players and you just have these maps. I mean, just like TF2 was in that regard, um, to make it a AAA price at originally $60 and then 50 uh, or something, or maybe it was straight, straight 50 still, that's a lot of money. Um, and then even the sale for the free weekend and after at like 35 is it's I'm it if it was just a basic un like only kind of polished FPS, I'd say it's definitely not worth that price tag. The fact that it is so well polished and fair like quality control and all that it makes me kind of say it might be worth $35. I would definitely be buying it if it was in the $20 to $25 range. Um, which is kind of where TF2 landed if you weren't buying it through the orange box. You were getting it as a straight premium person. Uh, it was 20 bucks, I believe. And then yeah. if uh, then Valve just came up with their microtransaction thing and said, fuck it, let's just make it free to play. And it's been doing... Uh, you know, banging ever since. And the fact that uh, Overwatch actually came with microtransactions in it for all the skins and, you know, various little achievement things you can get. And can't you just even buy more loot boxes? You can only buy loot boxes as the microtransaction. Oh, okay. I thought you could buy specific items. Oh, no. All right. Well, yeah. Even so, that it still got a microtransaction component and it. To have that price tag it kind of eh but i feel like most games it'll come down in price especially since blizzard has already shown their willingness to put it out on sale which many people said blizzard will never do um because you know wow has always been 15 dollars for subscription and hasn't changed so um so yeah we'll see what happens in that regard uh i do can say at the very end that a certain dear, very lovely IA podcasting Brian member um, gifted the game to me, so I don't have to worry about actually paying that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brian. No problem. Thank you, Brian, for bringing another soul into the overbutts. Oh yes. Well, you know what can I say? We need uh, we need to have the show in there, man. We needed him. So now he can nerd out with Overwatch stuff with us. Exactly, yes, because I always felt like he was always kind of left out whenever we talked about Overwatch, so. Yeah, me too. That Sombra stuff. Oh, hell yeah. God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, I, now we don't ever have to talk about her again. 
I ever feel again. Like, I feel like this is a straight up trigger for a dude run at this. A little point. bit, yeah. <laughs> just like, uh, just like anything May related is a trigger for me. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. No, God, no, <laughs> no! Why is it so cold? <laughs> I feel like if That's I ever edgy. just like need to uh, entertain myself, I'm just gonna come up with a May pun and a somber pun all in the same sentence and <laughs> I just have 20 minutes of you two screaming and agony. And <laughs> somber is more better. annoying to me than scary to me. So right. I'd just be mildly mildly annoyed while Brian would be crying in, in the corner. Though. Probably peeing his pants. <laughs> in the fetal position yeah. just like Sucking shivering. his thumb, peeing his pants. <laughs> Maybe shitting a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting dark, guys. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's getting dark. Yeah, it's getting edgy. Um, um, but you know what funny thing, though? We were playing some brawls yesterday, and uh, yeah. in the one brawl was like, uh, it, it was, uh, what was it? Like, you couldn't really pick your hero. You just got oh, a mobile watch. Every yeah, night. you had to, once you picked no, your hero, you were stuck. No, 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 not that one, but it was the other one. The one where, like, you got a random hero every life. Oh, um, Mystery oh, Heroes. Right, Mystery Heroes. Mystery Heroes. Thank yeah. you. There's a TF2 mod that did that, too. So, yeah, yeah, I think I've played on one of those servers before. Um, so, on my first life, I ended up getting May. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, and you did yeah. really well. <laughs> I didn't die a single time, and I got play of the game. Well, <laughs> and I got play of the game, and I was like, "Damn, I should." He froze like he killed two people. Yep, killed a Mercy and a Zarya. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. And that let me tell you, push. the fact that the play of the game, you can tell the quality of the round you just had by seeing. Oh, the play of the game is like some guy like killing like maybe one or two people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this was a shit game, guys. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't nothing really spectacular happened during that. You know, still it was kind of uh, it was kind of fun. I mean, I was Roadhog. I hooked a few people and then I died. Oh my god, Roadhog! I oh, Roadhog. I've developed a hatred for not really a hatred for Roadhog, but there was a few games where I was. God, I don't even remember what class. I know once is Lucio, but there, I was one of the women too at one point and. It was just like literally, I, I I turned a corner and just Roadhog and turned yeah. a corner and Roadhog and turned a corner and Roadhog. My You're God, damn it, get off my ass, man! Yeah, I'm you're at that hog. But um, <laughs> and then I the one I do have a hatred for that makes me think balance issues is that fucking diva mech robot thing. Oh my god, that needs to die. Yeah, it's it, a little annoying, it's, but it's, her damage and how often she does her thing is kind of low. I, I, but I but have a did. nuke! Yeah. You have a map nuke! And you get to Half have the map, map nuke, nuke if it nukes the map! You just it, need to it, stand it, behind it a wall! It has a, pretty, it, has a, it has a pretty long range. Yeah. But there's it's a couple like of ways... line of sight. That's still oh, yes. not allowed. Almost yeah. Almost, yeah. It is now. You can't have a line of sight it's explosion. Pretty it's pretty damn no. far. No. No. It's pretty damn far. Pretty but much you know every what? alt is line of sight. Uh, it's but it's like an the explosion. smaller extents, but it's all line of sight. Yeah. Well, like, no, like Reinhardt if you're far even... enough away from the Zarya, the, the black hole thing, it doesn't affect you. If you hear... Hanzo scream his weird little mumbo jumbo, oh, yeah, and you can jump out of the way of the dragons. Yeah, and like I mean, With divas, you can you get gotta hide behind a lot of alts. Like a and... may wall. May walls are great for that. They True. are may walls yeah. are good uh, if you're a Winston. Yeah, shield can, works too. Can shield, shield can actually yeah. contain the explosion. <laughs> it can contain the explosion itself. It's a little risky. Yeah, but you yes, probably die doing explosion. it. I've used the Winston shield mostly as a choke point lock, like it's not even actually yeah. defending a point or myself like a or choke someone. Block, yeah. People just, do that. Things can't go through it, so I'm like, it's bigger than the door. <laughs> I think Reinhardt's uh, shield can la can handle it too. Yes, it I can. Yes, 
Yeah, okay. I can. So and, are, uh, what else? Have, I'm really like, bad at Reinhardt. <laughs> with, if it's positioned just the right way, I mean, Lucio can, you know, change the course yeah. and bump off the uh, the nuke. And if the Roadhog is feeling very uh, protective of his team, you can always, like, pull it to him <laughs> away from the point that people are at. Be all like, exactly. I saved your lives, remember me. <laughs> Get to the point. <laughs> You're riding that hog now, boys. <laughs> so yeah, I um, I am interested to see what Overwatch does in the future. Oh, and one other thing that me and Brian have decided I did, mostly because when I was doing the free weekend, I knew pretty much halfway through I wasn't going to be buying the game, mostly for financial reasons. Tros broke. And that I, I just decided not to open any of the loot boxes that I got for leveling up. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And now that I have the game, that like that reason is gone. But I decided <laughs> like we're just gonna see how long I can test myself on the temptation and anxiety of the fact that I have a bunch of loot boxes in my inventory that I haven't opened. So yeah, I'm at uh, ten or eleven of them at the moment. Yeah, that's gonna be rough, man. Yeah, good luck to you. Open them. Because you don't get any <laughs> coinage, you don't get any new items unless you open up those loot boxes. Right. So you're going to be at stock everything, basically. Which, by the way, speaking of coins, the only goal I have in Hero of the Storm is just to buy all of the WoW furry characters. <laughs> that's cool. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, oh, hey, and, uh, I, I, like that's my goal in life with that game. It's not to get I, good. It's not <laughs> to learn the mechanics. It's not to even really. I mean have a good time yes but it's not really to have it's just like all right i'm gonna save up all of my gold and all at once just like drop 110,000 gold on all of the furry characters <laughs> from wow you <laughs> can't worry about you anything else get a griffin, buy any more so false dad as well exactly yes the griffin false dad. so i actually yeah. count um i count the griffin as false dad and he just has an ugly guy on top of it who isn't <laughs> named <Dad>. that <laughs> That is my unnamed, head cannon right unnamed there. Unnamed dwarf, yeah, that's just there. <laughs> just unnamed dwarf man that needs to be ripped off of the back of Falstad. Exactly. Falstad, <laughs> let me go! <laughs> let <laughs> me go, Falstad! Meanwhile, every WoW person listening to this is cringing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maybe. But you know what? It's funny because in the new expansion, you get to see Lily again. She, you, she actually uh, helps you find your uh, artifact weapon Ooh. oh cool so, yeah it's kind of cool oh and you can also get her to you can assign her as a sort of like a bodyguard type of thing so whenever you're out in the in the actual game world and you get hit by an enemy there's a chance that she'll come along and she'll heal you while damaging Poof. the enemy so that's kind of cool cool it's a cool little mechanic yeah Poof. The the is not here <laughs> the yeah. same thing with uh, Chen Storm. What's his name? Chen, Chen Storm, Storm Stout. Stout. Yeah. yeah. He's my current bodyguard at the moment. So we're just chilling, you know, just running around uh, the Broken Nile. Killing all the things. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So, um, also, mm -hmm. speaking of Overwatch things and Blizzard, dude, I heard you did a thing. Oh, yes, I did. I dropped a pencil. Fuck. Uh, that wasn't the right thing. That wasn't, wasn't the thing, right thing, but... but it was a thing that just happened immediately. But I went on castingcall.club, where you can like try out for audition, voice acting I auditions like for things. I feel like that's an extra long name unnecessarily. Yeah. But, hey, I'll just call it big... Casting Call. There you go. Right. I went on Casting like Call to audition for some roles and one of the roles i auditioned for is a comic dub series and i auditioned for soldier 76 and i got the part nice that's nice. awesome yeah i'll be uh my first comic is already i already voiced my lines so far but i think last i heard they were waiting for one more so whenever they get their thing done should see the video very soon. I'll, I'll leave a link if it happens to come up by the time this goes live. But I'm voicing Soldier 76 now. It's pretty fucking great. 
I met the Reaper voice actor too. We're apparently like really into Reaper seventy (laughs) six. It's fucking awesome. (laughs) The Reaper guy, the Reaper voice actor. I forget his name now, but he's fucking awesome at that voice. Holy shit! Sick. You got to hear it, Brian. I got to like. I can't wait to share this video. (laughs) Holy shit. Yeah, I'm really stoked to hear it. Anyway, so is it a, is it like a YouTube thing or it'll be a YouTube thing? Yeah. Else? Okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, keep us posted. Yeah, I shall. A lot of the world knows about it already, but if you haven't, we have one specific link we need to share with you, aside from the Arby's Chocobo, <laughs> and that is you need to go look up Ember Labs. Not related to the previous Ember thing we were talking about, yeah. but Ember Labs Terrible Fate Majora Mask video. Oh my Majora's god. Mask. The, the quality on that thing. Holy bejesus. Amazing! Amazing! Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> so much new drinking game. Freezy death! <laughs> it's so the cool. little droid! Everything's so cold. That's dark, yo. <laughs> I mean, That's Majora's I Mask is edgy. pretty dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. And you know what? That video did have a lot of dark elements. In it. It, so. Majora's Mask is a really dark Zelda. Oh, it's perhaps my favorite for like it. it yeah. God damn it, Nintendo, for making the Zelda series so damn good because I kind of sit there and like. Ocarina of Time so good, but Majora's Mask is so good. And then Wind Waker, fuck yes! And Twilight Prince, oh, oh, oh god! And then oh, you get Skyward oh, Sword, and then it's like... Oh, fuck. Oh, god. What happened with you... Skyward Sword? I don't know. Yeah, no, I don't know. I actually don't have a Wii, so I couldn't play it. I ha- a friend of mine had one, and I watched him play it for like three hours at like a get-together thing. But, um... That's like my experience with Skyward Sword is it's it's like a derpy Wind Waker. Mm-hmm. And I thought like I was one of the people that was super excited when Wind Waker came out. Like everybody when it came out was like, what the fuck is this art style and this ocean shit? Where the hell is Hyrule? And, um, you know, we had this Majora's Mask shit that was like pretty good, but it was in a different world. And, you know, nobody really knows what the hell happened there. And we expected to go back, and now it's not there. And, and seriously, what the fuck is with this art style? And I was just kind of like, I like it. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> it was nice. It was a tw- It was a shocker, but it it was nice. Mm-hmm. Also, holy fuck, the Zelda timeline. Oh my god. I was actually at Barnes and Noble. We were buying something for my sister's birthday, or I mean Christmas, and. I happened to trip over the nerd section that was like all the RPG D and D books and Pathfinder and you know yada yada. Um, the thing I didn't expect to see over there, and had I had more money in my account, would have bought it, um, is the Hylian his like historical or the the official Zelda timeline oh, and God. lore book that's like in the hard cover green backing with the the gold lace uh uh Triforce. Hy- Hylian seal on the front. Oh god. Um a friend of mine from college has that book and I wanted to borrow it from him but it was when we were like when I was leaving that college so I couldn't really do that cuz we never knew when we'd see each other again. But um yeah, I saw that book there, and I'm like, oh my god, I am so close to buying this. I mean, so. It's an awesome, like, collector's item to have, but holy fuck, the timeline is more wibbly-wobbly and timey-wimey than Doctor fucking who. I believe Oh it. my god. The Zelda timeline? Yes. There is no Zelda timeline. Yeah, I there is. <laughs> No, there isn't. Yes, there, there is. Isn't. There's alternate universes and main timelines and universes that... Or what you know if what? this they, person they, did this created, thing at this specific what, time and universes where what if this person did this other thing at this specific time and holy shit. Oh my I god. Be, I believe when they first started making this game, they had 
I had no idea of a timeline. No, yeah, no, there wasn't yeah. any. So then, you know, eventually the fans came up with some theories, and then I think the developers just kind of went along with it and you know gave their two cents in. Um, yeah. I actually, I think a lot of people agree with you on that. That they started the game, they kept doing cool shit for a while, and the fans uh, yeah, realizing that there was all these timeline possibilities, and of course, trying to put the lore together because. People like me love to sit there and drool over the lore and <laughs> eat it all up. And, and I, I, yeah, and I won't lie, it's fun. It's fun, kind of you know, so, going through all that. Right, and I, I think the the fact that the fans were doing all that, and you know, you Nintendo constantly kept getting questions relating to that kind of topic. That they finally went, okay, somebody should kind of set the record straight on this one because we're confusing ourselves at this point, and the fans know more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this was so. Zelda came out. The original Zelda came out in the eighties, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was uh, like before yes. people knew what games were or what developers thought games were. Yeah, a little bit. So, I can I can understand that being like the idea. But I holy see, shit, more, trying to make sense I, of it now. Um, yeah, I, I see like the um, the Zelda games. I see them more as the self-contained fables. Each and every one of them. Yeah, all of them are. I mean, they except are, maybe Zelda one and two. But they have like true. They have connecting elements between the fables. Yeah. Right. I mean, sort of like Final Fantasy. You know, there's oh, yeah. a lot yeah. of the same. You know, similar elements. Each one's a different like universe and character set and all mm -hmm. that. Right. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, Majora's Mask, Terrible Fate, super legit video, go watch it. Oh my god, you'll love and it. I wish this was a movie, like, mm -hmm. full-length yeah. movie I, of Majora's um, Mask. This needs to happen. Actually, do you want the Reddit AMA of that? Uh, sure. Give, please. And maybe link it in the notes so I can post it. Oh, yeah, I was. Oh, and I have a little confession to make. I've been playing World of Warcraft the entirety of this podcast. God damn it, Brian. <laughs> you know, that's impressive. Oh. It's just it's so good. I actually saw that in Discord, and I kind of just figured you were letting it idle or something, and I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm just not going to question it. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so somebody... Uh, funny story to end the end the podcast with. Um, I'm on the Fort Aspenwood Discord, and this is Guild Wars Two for those that don't know. Yes, um, but that part's not important. Honestly, it's just I'm on a different Discord that has a huge amount of people on it, and um, in Discord you can take uh, EXE processes and rename them, or name rather name ones that. Discord app doesn't really recognize as games uh, as a way to then show in your friends list or what have you that you are playing XYZ. And so one of the fun things you can do is take things that aren't normally games like Firefox or Chrome or Microsoft Office or something and then rename them in Discord to not only be recognized but be called whatever the hell you want. So I named Firefox Prawns Navigator 3000. Which and is entirely somebody, true, by the way. Yes, this is not made up. And somebody in the Fort Aspenwood Discord finally asked about it. And the ensuing conversation of, what the fuck are you always playing, you pervert, <laughs> uh, was very lolsworthy. Good times. Uh <laughs> also different person but um a few weeks prior to that my commander in guild wars 2 had already noticed this and used it as a way to tell me that i was not allowed to weigh in on a conversation because i'm always playing front navigator 3000 <laughs> <laughs> It's just like well. no sure you're done I'm like, <laughs> all right then fine <laughs> shro has been put in his corner <laughs> okay <laughs> So I, I think that's good. I think I think that's had a good yeah. Week. I think it's a we good had a lot of up. turkey fisting going on last week for Thanksgiving. Oh hell yeah! And you we'll fought be, a possum. We'll be back to that apparently. Like, yeah, I did fight a possum. 
How'd that end? Got, um, well, you know. Well, you know, the possum is not pregnant, but, you know, we won't. I, yeah, I was trying not to that. say it. It's just, you know, there's a family now. I wouldn't you say it? That's good news. Congratulations, Shro, for being the father of a possum family. Now they can all hang off my arms and threaten people. Yeah. And now we can raid everybody else's Thanksgiving dinners, too. Yes. All the stuff. I have some of mine. Life. I actually don't like Thanksgiving leftovers, so. What? I have. Um, I'm not a fan of leftovers, dude. Then you're gonna hate the fact that I'm about to tell you that as a tradition at my old pizza shop job, we would take Thanksgiving leftovers and Christmas dinner leftovers to the pizza shop the next day, like Black Friday, mm -hmm. and we would then make a pizza with those leftovers as the toppings. Well, if you're reheating them with pizza, that in pizza, that's fine. Like you're well, but, taking I mean, a thing that's been all, old all in the fridge and not nuking like, it. That's good. But that's it, all we like, kind of do here at my house, and I do not like yeah. that. I uh, tend to take a. We tend to take the uh, leftover turkey and make sandwiches out of it. Ew. But um, how do you live with yourself? <laughs> uh, so judgmental. I, mean, I fap, I fap, I eat, I do stuff, I play games. Eat sandwiches, is gross. Sandwiches are delicious. Cold sandwiches, fuck that. No, no. not cold. When oh. did I say it was cold? You said sandwich. Bitch, you don't know me. <laughs> put them in the who put, who them makes a, a hot bit, you know? Who makes a sandwich and says it's not cold? Fuck. What? I don't know anymore. What? I'm. <laughs> Spouting shit. What? Point I is, I don't. I'd food. rather have real food rather than a sandwich. Why do I have a Reddit message? Yeah. That's the huh. AMA I was talking about. Oh no, there is a message on my Reddit on feed. Reddit. That oh, wasn't what okay. you linked. No. Okay. I opened Remind the link me. to Reddit when you look when you linked the thing, and then I noticed in the upper right that I have a message. That that that's what happened. Got it. But no, seriously, for any of you that are into the cooking thing, like casseroles, cranberry sauce, um, you know, broccoli, veggies, whatever, shredded chicken, bacon, even, you know, olives, uh, some of the rolls you can put on as a top, put all of it, just space it out, you know, you know, moderation is good, but make sure it's there. And either we tend to use a white sauce or like an oil sauce, um, but you could do it with a regular red tomato sauce for your pizza nice amount of cheese on it super delicious wonderfully hearty 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 thanksgiving leftover pizza do it also stuffed crust stuffed crust pizza is basically the best thing ever yeah i i agree that is the sex we should push the button now and yeah, maybe it's all the way over there and i don't want to get up we also we haven't said goodbye the... yet I mean, sometimes you don't have to. I, I think Saying we do. goodbye is hard. Why don't you just say hello? We did say hello. Now we have to say goodbye. It's not like oh, we're saying goodbye hello forever. From it's the just, other side. We're just saying goodbye for this week. I mean, yeah, the so you know, that, the description, they can join us if they want, and then we can say hello I, to them again. This is true. If you or know us. what I mean. Or maybe like a see you never type of thing. Well, that's if we, like, quit the podcasts, and I don't know when that's going to be, if we do it. God damn it. I've had to log into my bank account, like, three times, because I keep trying to do something, and then I end up talking and not paying attention, and then it times out, because it's got, like, a 15-minute timer on it, for security reasons. You have a 15-minute timer on that, and you keep timing it out? Yep. Wow, Shro, you really are bad at that. Yep. Well. Welcome to my life. Well, since no one else will do it, thank you guys for listening to us ramble and rant about video games and random things. And I'm just going to pull the stuff. cord right out of the wall. But come check us out if you like, and you can find all our Maybe they're listening from outer people, space! Where to find them in the description. So thank God you guys for listening, and we'll see you next week. Bye! Bye. So what did you put on that pizza there, Shro? Like, what was the uh, craziest that, that thing you put on? Babies, there? obviously. Well, yeah, Thanksgiving leftovers, and now he's super quiet. Well, you know, you probably have to go. Yeah.
masturbate. Eat his possum babies or something. Eat his po- Why would- Do they do that? Seriously? I don't know! Tro, do, do they do sad? that? Um... Do I look like a nature biologist? It, it might happen, but generally no, they're not known for that. Okay. That's hamsters, but in nature, though, isn't it? In nature, it's basically a possibility all the time for every animal, uh, so I can't really say no. It's pretty fucked up. Well, in nature, nature you know, animals realize that, you know, sometimes it's not a good idea to have a kid. Mm. <laughs> or maybe this kid is broken and I should try for a new one. And, and you know, that's just the way it is. And I've and, seen Telosa receipt, so I can't exchange him anymore. Possum babies? So I'm just gonna eat him. I think we should stop now. I thought we did stop. I was no, like, I thought we did. I haven't hit the button yet. We can sit you on a oh. little longer and then have little filler on the outside. You're really bad at hitting the button. Listen, okay, fine. You already get said up and a, fucking listen, hit the button. God. Listen, you already said a cock or two and now you want a filler? 